What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. In this video, we gotta find the domain of these three functions here. And notice that all three of these functions contain this expression, the fourth root of 16 minus two to the power of negative five x. But in this function, it's in the uh, denominator. It's in the denominator here, and then we have the square root of one minus x in the numerator. So just a bunch of different ways where this can show up and it's actually gonna change the domain for all the functions. So starting uh, up here, notice we have the fourth root of an expression. And remember, whenever we have the even root of an expression, that expression, in this case, it's 16 minus two to the power of negative five x, that has to be greater than or equal to zero because you can't take the even root of a negative number you can't take the fourth root of a negative number so this here has to be greater than or equal to zero it could equal zero we could take the fourth root of zero that would just be zero we could take the fourth root of a positive can't take the fourth root of a negative so what we got to do now is we got to isolate for this x which is gonna be kind of tricky, but it's not too bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring this negative two to the negative five X to the other side. Let's put this 16 closer. So we'll end up with two to the power of negative five X like that. And notice we could get a common base here. So this 16, we can rewrite as two to the power of four that has to be greater than or equal to two to the negative five X. And because we have the same base here, we can drop the base. And what that means is that four has to be greater than or equal to negative five X. Now, a couple of different ways to solve this. We could divide both sides by negative five, but when we divide by a negative, when you're dealing with inequalities, remember you gotta flip the sign. So this greater than or equal to would change to a less than or equal to and this would be negative four over five. Or what you can do from here is you could bring the negative five X over, bring the four over, that would become negative four. And then you could just divide by five, positive five, and you don't have to worry about flipping them because you brought that negative X over anyway. Right, so this and this, notice they're the exact same thing. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative four over five. And negative four over five, that's like negative 0.8. Okay, so the domain of this, let's write it a little nicer. The domain is x can be anything as long as x is greater than or equal to negative four over five. Or you could write it as x is an element from negative four over five, notice it includes negative four over five, so there's a square bracket there, because it can be zero. At a point, at an x value negative four over five, this would end up being zero, and you could take the four through to zero. So it's inclusive of that, greater than or equal to that, all the way to positive infinity, like that. Right, so that's the answer to number one, it's just isolating for that X. Could be a little tricky, we're dealing with exponents, but it's not too bad. You just gotta make sure that that expression is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, what about here? What if this expression is in a denominator now? So notice we have one over that same thing, the fourth root of 16 minus two to the negative five X. Well, now this changes because not only does this still have to be positive, right, can't be negative, we can't take the fourth root of a negative, it also can't be zero, because now it's in a denominator, so you can't uh, divide by zero. And so this expression now, 16 minus two to the negative five x, instead of being greater than or equal to zero, now is just greater than zero. And we would follow those exact same steps, but here we would end up with x has to be greater than negative four over five, or there, or greater than negative 0.8, right? Because it can't equal zero anymore. So it can't be that number negative four over five, because negative four over five would make that denominator zero, and that can't happen. So 
it's just greater than that number. So the domain is XCR, X is greater than negative 4 over 5. And then this would be X is an element. This would be a circle bracket now, not a square bracket because it's not inclusive of that negative 4 over 5. Like that. Right? So just be careful if these expressions are in a denominator, then they can't equal zero. If they're not in a denominator, then they can equal zero. It would be greater than or equal to zero. And by the way, you can test this. So notice that we said it has to be greater than negative, um, it has to be greater than negative 0.8. So what if we tried negative one here? Well, notice we would have then 16 minus two, negative five times negative negative one is five. So we'd have 16 minus two to the power of five, which is 32. 16 minus 32 is negative 16. Can't take the fourth root of negative 16. Right, so on the way you can test this, try different numbers and make sure that uh, it's corresponding to the domain that you're getting. Right, and then finally, number three, Notice how we have the square root of 1 minus x over the fourth root of 16 minus 2 to the negative 5x. So let's actually forget about this numerator for now. Notice that this expression is the exact same as this expression that was in this denominator. So we definitely know that x has to be greater than negative 4 over 5. That's for sure. That for sure has to happen. No matter what's in this numerator, this has to hold or else what's going to happen is that this function is going to be undefined, either because this is zero or because this expression under the fourth root is going to be negative. So this definitely has to hold because of this, and we figured that out in number two. But now, because we, now since we have a square root of 1 minus x, we also have to make sure that this 1 minus x is greater than or equal to zero. And notice because it's in the numerator, it's greater than or equal to zero. Notice it could equal zero. So an x value of one would make this equal to zero and we could take zero and divide it by another number. That's fine, we just can't divide by zero. But a zero can be in the numerator, so that's why we have a greater than or equal to zero here. If this square root of one minus x was in the denominator, then we'd be just finding when does one minus x, when is that greater than zero? It wouldn't be able to equal, but because it's in the numerator, it can equal. So isolating for this, pretty simple. Um, x has to be less than or equal to one, right? Because any x values greater than one, it's gonna make this negative. So like if we put two, we'd have one minus two, which would be negative one, can't square root, negative one. So x has to be greater than negative four over five, and it has to be less than or equal to one. And notice that if we combine these, what that means is x can be anything as long as it is greater than negative 4 over 5, but less than or equal to 1. And if we put in this notation, it would be from negative 4 over 5 to positive 1, and that would be a square bracket. Circle bracket because it's not inclusive, and then a square bracket because it is inclusive.